again, YouTube. This is Dr. Kendo, and I'm here with Scribble Knots Unlimited. This is the Object Editor Commentaries, where I create your favorite characters in the Scribble Knots Unlimited Object Editor. This is a feature just for the Wii U and PC versions of this game. We started off with an owl for the source object of uh, what we're going to do for today's creations, which is going to be the middle evolved forms of the Pokemon Sun and Moon starters. So, of course, starting off with an owl is probably going to be obvious that we're going to be going with Dartrix first. So Dartrix is the, of course, evolution of Rowlet. Uh, I did say in my last, when I did uh, the starters, I have created them in Scribble Knots. so when I made the Sun and Moon starters, I said that Rowlet was going to be my starter Pokemon of choice, which is quite a departure, I guess, from what I normally do. Normally, I pick the fire Pokemon whenever I'm playing Pokemon games. But, you know, I'm almost, I think my feelings might even be changing from Rowlet, and, uh, you know, I still love Rowlet and everything like that, but uh, after seeing some things, let's say, I may be having a change of heart. Who knows? But we took off the owl's head and the wing, of course, and we put down a heart just now, the shape heart, and that's going over a sphere, which is going to be like for the head, but then a beard, which is uh, basically for some chest hair feather looking parts, I guess, right there, where uh, Dartrix's chest would be. And so, of course, I moved the legs, the, you know, the front leg, I guess, of the owl will be over the body. It'll be in front of the body or whatever by layers. And so I did move it behind the body. So hopefully you notice that too, that both legs are behind the body as far as the layers go and uh, the order that they're in. A moon is what I typed in for the crazy hair flipping action of Dartrix. You know, he can flip his hair like an angsty teen or an emo. And so uh, the moon, there's one that's behind the heart shape and then one that's in front, you know, to kind of give the illusion that one strand of flippy hair feathers is uh, a little bit bigger. A lantern fish, the back tail piece is what we just put over a golden egg to be kind of where the beak is for uh, Dartrix right here. Kraken, taking any of those kind of bended tentacle pieces kind of near the end of the tentacles uh, right there are going to be for Dartrix's eyes with shark pup, that middle fin in the back that is kind of pointing downwards. Those are for the two chest feathers right there. Just like Rowlet kind of has the chest feather bow tie, Dartrix has that right there. A Terratorn is what we're putting down now for the wing right there and we're also going to copy those shark pup fins and we're going to place those where the tail is uh, over the owl in scribble knots but that'll kind of be a good placeholder for where we actually want Dartrix's little two shark pup tail pieces to be. The Terratorn wing was just moved in a little bit closer to the body and I've typed in pill and the pill is just because Dartrix's legs are a little bit thicker I guess you know there's uh, just a little bit more wide than the owl in scribble knots so the red part of the pill I colored orange and the other part we can leave white and so then I just took that Terratorn wing and put it on the backside as well you know kind of so that there are two wings visible now the only problem with this and scribble knots is that an owl in this game you can only see one wing moving for the owl so it's kind of implied of course that it has two wings but all you see is the side that's closest to us that wing will be flapping up and down when it flies so the same is going to happen here with our owl creation for Dartrix in scribble knots uh, I took a jellyfish upper tentacle piece and and ovals. Ovals are on the wing. Just type in oval for the little orange oval shapes on the wing. But yes, you're going to see Dartrix only fly kind of with one wing, unfortunately, because of the limitations of Scribble Knots Unlimited. Yes, it's called Scribble Knots Unlimited, but it is limited in some ways. But here we're on the properties editor where I just like to read background information and fun facts about the characters that we create in this series. I'm going to be reading off of the Pokemon Sun and Moon website directly for most of these, so we'll read kind of the last paragraph for Dartrix. It says, at times, this Pokemon feels so bothered by its dirty or ruffled feathers that it can't focus on battle. When it loses its focus, it sometimes even retires from the battle on the spot. It's up to each trainer to help Dartrix overcome this troublesome stage. If this Pokemon is with a trainer who helps it through, its strength will grow hugely. And so we did kind of basic scripts, just made it shoot out a leaf as a projectile, and a few other things just made it brave whenever it loses or gains health in the scripting. And so uh, we'll go ahead and start off with a Chimera as the source object here for our next character, which, if it isn't clear, is going to be Toracat. So now I just typed in a Bunyip after removing a whole bunch of, you know, limbs. We removed all the little legs, the bottom parts of the legs, the last tail piece, and the head, and we took the Bunyip's back legs to be the back legs for Toracat, but we're also going to type in Bunyip once more and just grab this now front leg to be for the front legs of Toracat. And uh, definitely, you know, in comparison to Litten. 
Litton was my least favorite of the uh, starters that was revealed and everything back when they did reveal the starters for the first time. But definitely with the uh, new introduction of Toracat, I do believe that uh, it is a lot cooler now. I, I like Toracat a lot. We just took the body of a dagger tooth, the middle part of the body, since the dagger tooth kind of has multiple body pieces and stuff to it that it could have been. And we're also going to try that on for the tail. I may end up changing this. I'm not positive yet. But just to kind of get the tail going here, we're going to type in a dust and you know it's like a little feather duster or whatever that'll be for the end of the tail I used a uh, grass for litten for the tail and I think duster actually could work a little bit better if you want to do that same thing to kind of adjust your litten design or not you can just go back and see what the duster looks like in comparison to grass but here you can see we just took from the 10th page of the 29 page library of shapes we took a 10th page arm shape and uh, that's gonna be for the top stripe and I have it for the bottom stripe but I'm actually thinking we'll try on the 22nd page there is this arm I kind of like this one actually a little bit better for the tail stripes it's bent kind of in the middle evenly for the most part so we'll go with that the 22nd page arm instead for the two stripes both upper and lower stripe right there and another change that I'm gonna make to the tail is to replace that dagger tooth body with now the tail of a joey the tail is very low in the bottom left corner and it's like almost hidden around the legs and the body and stuff of the joey so it is slightly hard to find uh, but we'll go with that 10th page arm shape, that mutant arm. Once again, from the 29 page library, we can use that for the leg stripes, but then we'll go ahead and uh, double up with that 22nd page arm shape from the 29 page library and make that be the bottom stripes on all of the legs right here. And so it looks like a bell, but it's basically, it's uh, been confirmed that it's a flame sack. So there is a flame sack here that kind of is like this bell shaped or bell looking thing that's on Toracat. To make that, we just used a a golf ball for the main yellow part of it and then that little reddish orange dot in the middle of it or sort of offset from the middle is a uh, BB and so then I just typed in toothpick for the main line on the back of the uh, Torah cats back you know that pattern right there and then uh, Allosaurus you can take the end tail piece of an Allosaurus it's the very last tail piece and make that be for uh, the little points that are coming to or the horizontal stripes I guess you could say and so actually I just tried typing in cuttlefish and grabbing those little tendril front antenna pieces and stuff to make the claws, but it looks like we did run out of stamp space after only two of those, so what I'm going to do for the front claws on Toracat instead is just type in hair and put the hair behind the paws because the hair has those three points, and so that's a way that we can save stamp space and still get what we want here. So let's read some uh, Pokemon Sun and Moon official website blurbs about Toracat. It says, Toracat has a great love for battle and will attack so relentlessly that its opponents lose the will to fight, and yet it sometimes behaves like a spoiled child in front of trainers or Pokemon with whom it has built a relationship of trust. So more than meets the eye with Toracat, although I think that's kind of the way it is with all of these uh, Pokemon here for the middle evolved forms of the Alolan starters. Hopefully you noticed we did use a projectile of a fireball for Toracat as the weapon, you know, so it shoots a uh, fireball. And uh, again, just with the scripting of whenever it loses or gains health, it will add an adjective of brave. So I was talking about Scribblenauts Unlimited being kind of limited sometimes. Well, one of the other limitations in this game is uh, stamp pieces. So basically, just like we typed in the dolphin here and went right underneath the fin that you can see to grab the fin that you can't see in the back. So you're going to want to put your mouse or your stylus just below, kind of off the body in the middle there to try to grab that fin for the ears. Well, that's a stamp piece, just like this two toothpick is that we're using. Those are all stamps, you know, whatever you use to create your object overall is a stamp piece. And so what I'm saying is that Scribblenauts Unlimited is actually limited in how many stamps you can use to create your object. So we did run out of stamp space for Torah Cat's body. And that means that we're going to want to, of course, make the head separately from that. So that's what I'm doing here. We did start off with the head as the source object, if that wasn't obvious. And uh, we use the cuttlefish antenna piece. Really, you can use either of the pointy triangular ones for the horizontal stripes on the forehead, but then Allosaurus, the back tail piece once again, will be for the horizontal stripes down there, kind of closer to the eyes. And I'm typing in a blobfish, and we'll take the back tail piece of the blobfish, paint that sort of an off grayish color, and make that be for some fluff inside the ears. You know, this detail right there for the dolphin ears. Same 22nd page arm shape from the 29 page library. That's going to be kind of for this muzzle right here, and uh, that snout area for Toracat. 
that. Then I took, a, I typed in crab, and you can just take the front pincer, you know, its claws right there, and those pinchers will actually be for some tufts of hair going off to the side. And a, an ostrich egg is going to be for the eye that is closer to us, I guess you could say, our left. But then the eye on our right, Torcat's left, is a golden egg. Just a difference based on how wide they are. They are very close together in size and shape and all that. Uh, pike, we took the kind of middle front fin for the pike, or that front fin, I should just say, maybe not middle. And that that's going to be for the small little nose of Toracat here with the rat tail being the mouth and uh, paint the rat tail all black as black as night. And so we'll go with the cuttlefish again, but grab that tendril piece that is triangular, but that's kind of all the way to the right for its uh, front tentacles. And uh, here we go, Toracat head. I'm going to save this while I'm at it just so that there's no errors. But that little cuttlefish piece was for a tooth. And then after that, we'll just be typing in dot and the dot can be sort of of this orangish red color with another dot to be the black right there so that the eyes are kind of having this multicolored look to it. Looks good to me. I took another golden egg to put behind that golden egg that we have for the eye and then an ostrich egg that we had for the eye for the ostrich egg and both of those were painted black. Basically imagine like it had eyeshadow on or something like that you know so uh, just for some more black around the eyes both of them. That same cuttlefish piece will be for some more hair kind of coming off of the chin right there on both sides. And if you ever create a head and a body separately in Scribble Knots Unlimited on your head object, you want to go to the equipment tab here in the properties editor and check off that third circle that says can be worn on the face like glasses. And that way it'll kind of be arranged mostly how you want it to be when you give the head piece to your body object. So we'll start off with a seal for our last creation today. Well, I guess we have the uh, head and the body separately, I think, because we're probably going to run out of stamp space with Brion's body. But this is Brion, and I'm so sad, but both my wife and I knew that Brion was going to get a ton of hate because just like Poplio got hate, Brion is, uh, I think people are claiming that it's too feminine and all that stuff, like femininity is a bad thing or something. I don't get that. We'll talk about it in a second. But uh, Golden Egg is going to be for the main base of the tail fins, but then an oval that's painted white is going to be behind those golden eggs. So for those tail fins back there, and hopefully you notice we took off the head, of course, and I put down a tutu and painted those white. There's two of them and then in between those two is going to be mud. So that's basically for like this dress looking part of Brion. And right now I'm placing a circle down where the head is supposed to be but that's more just for a placeholder because again I think we're going to have to create the head and the body separately. And so then I'm going to grab the Joey tail once again but I'm going to set it aside just real quick. Uh, we want to of course take a golden egg now once again for it's going to be basically the paws of Brion right here and then we can put that Joey tail back on in place underneath those paw golden eggs. Jellyfish upper tentacle piece again it's like the it's just a, basically a straight black line and it's right near the jellyfish's body and everything. We'll do that four times twice for each paw. Now we're gonna name it Brion and we'll talk about it and then we'll talk about maybe some of the controversy but basically the website says Brion always acts cheery and positive even when it's feeling sad this Pokemon doesn't allow its sorrow to show. It's said that Brion will only reveal a sad expression to a Pokemon or trainer whom it has opened its heart completely. It seems the hate has already set in for Brion, as I mentioned, which would be fine if you didn't like the character just on simple grounds of, eh, I'm just not into that look by itself. But when you throw in those kind of cringy comments like, quote, this is a real one, God, why does it look so feminine? That's stupid. I'm not playing the game, end quote. Or, this one was real good. Another real one. Quote, I don't want to go racist, but I hope that's Brion's female form. End quote. Racist. <laughs> So, honestly, a Kotaku article explains the situation so well and really sums up my feelings on it, so I'll quote them now. Quote from Kotaku, While some fans cite gameplay reasons for their distress, the underlying issue is clear. Looking feminine is unfortunately considered a bad thing by some people. After all, femininity has stigma, including the assumption that it embodies weakness, vapidity, or meekness. By looking, quote, feminine, unquote, Brion isn't afforded the chance to also be considered cool or strong by some people, and that sucks. End Kotaku quote. 
And yes, exactly. When you consider being feminine weak or bad, that's what I have a problem with. You can all like or dislike your starter of choice and your evolved form of choice, just like you guys may dislike Jinx or Hitmonchan or something, or the, I bet those are actually acceptable to most of those like people leaving those really cringy comments. Or what are they? Probably like hyper-masculine machoke lovers or something. Yeah, you guys get it. So we typed in a ping pong ball just now for the nose. We actually started off with a circle as the source object and not a head. Normally I do start off with a head, but it's just a circle. We took the body of a rabbit and the rabbit body is just right next to that ping pong ball nose for our Brion head here. Golden egg painted white for the eye. An amber is that first starting piece of the ear. And then a chicken nugget is what we're going to use for the main part of the mouth, but we're also going to put the tongue in there by using oval. Paint that oval this kind of reddish pink color and place that in there, and it can take up most of the space inside the mouth. A scorpion, that upper middle tail piece, that'll be for a little tooth in there inside the mouth. And uh, we'll take another amber for the ears on the other side. We won't finish those off just yet, but uh, I put down an oval to be sort of, I guess, it's like the pupil or maybe it's the iris of basically Brion's eye. Kind of that main blackish colored part right there. But then another golden egg is behind the white golden egg just peeking out over the top. We just want a little bit of the top to show. I painted it all black and then put a boomerang that's all black behind that. And those are basically for like some kind of eyeshadowy eyelash look for Brion. And then I went with a cuttlefish. If you grab kind of the, it's like almost a line, but it's in the very middle right next to the head of the cuttlefish so like the very middle tentacle tendril that is where I grabbed that piece from that's painted sort of reddish orange for some more color inside of Brion's eyes and then a P P E A is what we typed in for the white little shiny dot in the eye and a ping pong ball painted white again is going to be for the middle ear connector piece right there and a golf ball is going to be the next piece that we're doing painted white uh, to be sort of for the top of the ears and I like how this is turning out I think it actually looks a lot like the Brion's head from the announcement trailer. So that's epic. So we'll name it Brion Head. There you go. So again, remember the scripting whenever you're doing the head and the body separately. Just go into the properties editor and uh, of course go down to the equipment tab. Press that and uh, make sure it can be worn on the face like glasses. That's the third circle down from the top. And so here we go. We've got pretty much all of our creations because we've got the uh, starter Pokemon from that last episode that I did with them. Uh, you know, you can see Rowlet right here. <laughs> Dang it, I just made it. It, uh, dismount. There we go. Okay, so Poplio, Litten, they're all there. But you can see, of course, when we put on Toracat and Brion's head pieces, they don't exactly look right, you know, especially with Toracat, it's like way too far forward. So what you want to do is you want to click on the body and edit it. You can just go to edit object and then turn on the green grids. That's this button that's in the top right of your panel on the left side. Highlight that. It'll show all these green square pieces that are basically showing off the movement of your object and the joints where it all moves moves and stuff like that and so just grab that one where the head would be and move it back move it down kind of adjust it to wherever you kind of need the head to be if you need the head to be further backwards then of course you would move it kind of left or backwards uh, if you want it higher or lower up and down and so Brion will do kind of the same thing it doesn't need as much of an adjustment as the first one did but it's all right it's looking good so I think that we're pretty much set I do want to make Brion's body a little bit bigger we need to make it not the same size as Poplio so uh uh, there we go. We're going to show off what it looks like when they fight now and type in an angry demon for Brion to fight. And uh, this was one thing, even with Poplio, it was the same. You can see that the animation for battling looks sort of strange because the seal, normally it just has that little tiny, tiny, tiny front fin. It doesn't have like super long arms or anything like that. And so that tiny fin in the front is usually what shoots out the projectile. So in this case, it made the entire arm almost come off of the body. Now, Toracat, you're going to see that its arm actually goes kind of behind the head. That's because I moved the head grid all the way out to the front in order, you know, because I wanted the head to be ahead of everything else. If you make it so that the arm is actually in front of the head, in essence, you know, it will go in front of the head when it shoots like this. But those little chin hairs, you know, those kind of spiky looking chin cuttlefish hair pieces, those will actually be behind Toracat's upper front leg piece. So that's why I did not do that. That's, uh, that's why it kind of looks weird like this when it does the projectile, the head 
actually is in front of everything. And uh, I prefer that to the other, you know, the alternative. So you guys just make your own decision on that one. And we'll end off with an evil angry wolf for Dartrix to fight. That looks good. Okay. And so we've uh, got it right here and it's uh, the Dartrix is shooting out a leaf. That's pretty awesome. So there we go. It looks like it's going to beat it. All of our Pokemon have beaten the opponents that I threw at them. But yes, I'm not sure which Pokemon I'm going to pick as my starter, but it's between Poplio or Rowlet. I love that Rowlet is dual type, grass and flying, but just seeing how kind of discriminated against, I guess, Poplio has been and now it's evolved form, I'm really leaning towards Poplio. I want to be in its cheer section. Honestly, to me, it's a really cute Pokemon and uh, I think all of the starters can be deadly and can be awesome in their own regards. Pick the one that's great for you. Don't give anybody hate for picking something else. And I hope you guys are looking forward to the games. I'll catch you on the next vid. And thanks for viewing. Down the road up twists and turns, always anxious to see what's within. We can look ahead to the point of no return to the rest of our lives as a spectacle we give. Down the road.